What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here, moving on to the next example dealing with quadratic equations. We have to solve each of these and notice that all of these, they're either gonna be in fraction format or decimal format. So I wanted to go over these sort of special cases in case you run into them. There's multiple ways to do these kinds of questions. I'm gonna show you the way that I go about it but uh, your teacher, your textbook may show you a different way. Whichever way you're doing it, just make sure that you're getting the same solutions that I am. But personally, what I do, so let's write out this first one. We got x squared over two. By the way, this x squared over two, that's the same as like one half x squared. So you may see it written in this format. Sometimes they'll be put together. So we got x squared over two minus x over two minus three is equal to zero like that now one thing you could do is you can take this left side you can try to factor it with the fractions and we've gone through that before we've gone through examples where you can factor with fractions but when you're dealing with an equation what i actually recommend doing is multiplying everything on both the left side because remember, what you multiply on one side, you gotta multiply on the other side, since it's an equation. Multiplying everything by the lowest common denominator to get rid of the denominator. So if we do that, notice the common denominator between two, two, one, this zero is like over one, it's two. So if I multiply everything, all of the expressions by two, What's gonna happen? Well, these cancel out, so we're left with x squared minus, these twos cancel out, so we're just left with x. Uh, minus three times two would give us six, and then two times zero is just zero. So the solutions to this quadratic equation and this quadratic equation are actually going to be the same. And now notice that we got rid of the fractions. We're not dealing with fractions. Okay, so that's one way to go about it. And then when you solve this, you'd end up, this factors into what, x minus three, x plus two. That's gonna equal zero. So we end up with x equaling three over here, or x equaling negative two over here. So those would be the two solutions. Again, you could check these if you want, plug them into the original equation, make sure that the left side is equal to the right side. So personally, that's the way that I go about it. But if you did wanna maybe factor it with the fractions, um, if you remember the way you do that, let me just quickly show you, is you wanna get everything in terms of the same denominator. So this three is like over one. So I'm gonna change this three over one to also have a denominator of two since these two expressions have a denominator of two. So that would be like six over two. And then from there, you could take out the one over two and we're left with x squared minus x minus six like that. And then as we know, this factors into x minus three, x plus two, right? And then that's equal to zero. And then we would get an x value of three and an x value of negative two. We'd get those same solutions. It's just that a value in front would be different. But when you're solving an equation, this a value, it doesn't matter because the solutions, the x values that you're solving for are coming from the factors anyway. And the factors are gonna be the same no matter which way you do it. So it's not always gonna be smooth like this. A lot of times you're gonna be dealing with more intense fractions. And so going through this process with an equation, uh, I don't recommend doing, but you can if you want. Again, you're gonna get the same solutions. So that's personally the way that I go about it. So I multiply everything, whether it's fractions, and you'll also see with decimals. With decimals, it's a little bit different. But I multiply everything on both the left side and the right side to get rid of all the fractions, all the decimals, and then I go into solving it. So going to the next one, we got three over 10 X squared plus X over 20 minus three over five, and that's equal to zero. So notice in this case, lowest common denominator between 10, 20, five, and then this zero again, it's over one that would be 20. Okay, so we can multiply this by 20, multiply this by 20, multiply this by 20, multiply this by 20 right here. So 10 goes into 20 twice, 
So two times three X squared, that would give us six X squared. The 20s cancel out here, so we're just left with X. Five goes into 24 times, negative four times three gives us negative 12. And then we got 20 times zero, which would give us zero like that. Okay, and now we can take this, the solutions to this quadratic equation and this quadratic equation, they're gonna be the exact same. It's nice now though, because we're not dealing with any fractions. So let's see, let's write this up here. Let's see if this quadratic here is going to factor. So we have an A value of six, a B value of one, a C value of negative 12, AC would be negative 72. So are there two numbers that multiply to negative 72 and add up to that B value of one? And I think negative eight and positive nine are gonna work, right? So we could take that and factor it. Um, if you go through the factoring process a little quicker than I am right now, feel free to do that. Just whichever way you're factoring it, make sure you get the same thing at the end. So we end up with that. And then notice we could take out a three here. We end up with that. Then we could factor out a three X minus four and we're left with a two X plus three like that. So, um, this, this, like that. And so 3x minus 4 is equal to 0, which means x would be 4 over 3 over here. Or 2x plus 3 is equal to 0, which would mean x is negative 3 over 2. Okay, so those would be the two solutions for part. B. Then moving on to part C and D, they're both notice how they're decimals. And so as I mentioned, what I like to do is, like with fractions, multiply everything in order to get rid of the fractions or the decimals. So for example here, notice that we're dealing with the largest uh, amount of decimal places is 2 over here, and then we got two decimal places here. And so what we want to do is multiply everything by 100 in order to get rid of those two decimal places. Here, we're gonna only be dealing with one decimal place, so we can multiply everything by 10. Now, sometimes uh, in part C, it's gonna happen in particular, is you can actually take the leading coefficient. You could see that if you factor it out, so if I take out a 0.35, and I divide everything by 0.35 here, we'd end up with x squared minus 2x, and then this divided by 0.35 would give us 35, like that. And so in this particular case, if we take out this leading coefficient, we actually end up with a nice quadratic like this and then we can just factor that. But that's not always going to happen. So you'll see here, if you try to do that, if you take out the 0.8, uh, I forget which one, I think it would be this one, or maybe both, I don't even know. But if you divide 2.2 by 0 0.8 or 4 by 0 0.8, you'd end up with a decimal. So here, if we take out a 0.8, one of these terms here, is going to be, or maybe both of them, is gonna be a decimal. And you're not just gonna be able to smoothly factor something that has just pure integer coefficients like this. So you could sometimes check for these certain decimals, whether if I take out that leading coefficient, would everything end up being integers? But again, it's not something you could rely on all the time. It's not always gonna happen. But when I'm mentioning multiplying everything by 100 or multiplying everything by 10, that is always going to work. So with part C, let's actually just do both methods. So this here, if we keep the 0.35 factored out, this is going to factor into x minus seven, x plus five, like that. And so we end up with x minus seven equaling zero, x plus five equaling zero. So x equals seven or x equals negative five, like that. Those are the two solutions for part C. Now, what if we don't do it with this method? What if we do it with that other method, meaning multiplying everything by 100, right, to get rid of all the decimals? If we multiply everything by 100, 
we'd end up with 35x squared minus 70x minus 12,000, or a, sorry, 1,225. And then zero, we have to multiply whatever's on this side by 100 as well. That's just gonna be zero. And so now we end up with a quadratic equation with no decimals. And then from here, same thing, we could take out a 35 from everything. And we end up with that same quadratic that we had over here, right? So this factors into x minus seven, x plus five. And so the two solutions are x is seven, x is negative five. Okay, so multiple ways, again, that you could go about these, just whatever solutions you're getting, make sure that they are correct. I recommend taking these, plugging them back in, checking if both the left side is equal to the right side. Okay, now moving on to part D. Again, if we try to factor out this point eight here, uh, we'd end up with x squared over here, but one of these, um, yeah, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell which one it's going to be. Uh, well, actually, it's going to be this middle one because 4 divided by 0.8 would give us just 5. So this middle term here, whatever's going to be in front of the x, 2.2 .2 divided by 0 0.8, there's going to be a decimal value here. And so that's not going to factor smoothly. So we can't just take out the 0 0.8. So in this particular case, what can we multiply everything by? in order to get rid of the decimals, well, it's just one decimal place we're working with. If this was like 0 0.82, let's say, x squared, we'd have to multiply everything by 100, right? Because multiplying it by 10, we would only end up with 8.2 x squared. Um, but because we have one decimal place, one decimal place, we could just multiply everything by 10. So we'd end up with 8 x squared plus 22 x minus 40 is equal to zero, like that. Uh, just a quick sec, yes, everything looks fine to me. And so now we could solve this quadratic equation. There are no decimals involved. We could take out a two uh, and we'd be left with four X squared plus 11 X minus 20. That's gonna equal zero. And then let's work with this quadratic. Let's see if it factors. So we got an A value of four, we got a B value of 11, we got a C value of negative 20, A, C value of negative 80. And so two numbers that multiply to negative 80 and then add up to 11. That would be, I think, uh, negative five and 16. That works, right? Negative five times 16 is negative 80. Negative five plus 16 gives us 11. So we could decompose that middle term. Uh, sorry, this is 16x minus 20. From these two, we could take out an x. Uh, from these two, we could take out a four. And then we could take out a four x minus five. And then we got an x plus four like that. So this would be four x minus five, x plus four is equal to zero. So we end up with four x minus five equaling zero, and then we got x plus four equaling zero. So this is gonna be x equaling five over four. Here, x is gonna be negative four. So those would be the two solutions to part D. Uh, to part D. Okay, so Personally, that's the process I take. I look at any equations that contain fractions, multiplying everything by the lowest common denominator to get rid of all the fractions. Or with decimals, I look at what I can multiply everything by. Usually it's 10 or 100. Sometimes you might get three decimal places. That's a little bit overkill. But if you do, then you'd have to multiply everything by 1,000. So either multiplying something all the decimal values by something to get rid of the decimal values. And just make sure that you're multiplying both the left side and the right side. In this particular case, the right side was always zero. So 
it was always going to end up being zero, but that might not always be the case. Like we may have had a number over here and you'd have to multiply that same value on the right side that you multiplied on the left side. In this case, it was the hundred. So then you'd bring everything over after to one side and then solve the equation from there. All right. So with these kinds of questions with fractions and decimals, this is the way that I personally go about.